Let me tell you about uh, what goes into curing a critical security bug. So at the start of, um, at the, start of the year, WordPress 4.1.2 was released um, uh, with a fix for what was one of WordPress's most severe security bugs ever, uh, what we affectionately call the Trojan Emoji bug. Uh, the name actually works on two levels. Uh, first, that uh, we used Emoji as a cover for committing the fix to WordPress, but also that Emoji can be used to trigger it. Now, Andrew Nason gave a talk earlier this year about, it, um, about how this bug works. Um, if you haven't seen it, I strongly encourage you to uh, check it out. It's called Anatomy of a Critical Security Bug, and it's up on WordPress TV. Uh, for everyone who hasn't seen it or doesn't recall the salient details, allow me to give you a brief refresher. So MySQL supports a feature called character sets. Uh, character sets in MySQL are simply a standard way of storing text on disk, whether that be letters, numbers, or emoji. Um, that's all there is to it. So by, the far, by far the most common uh, character set in MySQL is UTF-8. It's certainly the most common in WordPress. Prior to WordPress 4.2, about 95% of all WordPress sites used UTF-8. Now, UTF-8 is kind of interestingly named because it's not actually UTF-8. Um, the second UTF-8 is the actual standard and was only implemented in MySQL 5.5 as the UTF-8 MB4 character set. Um, as of WordPress 4.2, we default to using UTF-8 MB4 uh, when we can. But the UTF-8 character set, on the other hand, was only a partial implementation of the UTF-8 standard. The UTF-8 character set was actually an, impl an implementation of what's called the Basic Multilingual Plane, or BMP. The BMP covers most European lang uh, languages and most of the um, and the most common East Asian characters, but is really only about 6% of the entire UTF-8 standard. Any character outside of that, for example, again, emoji, um, is not supported by the UTF-8 character set. But you can easily type an emoji character. So how does WordPress handle it when you try to save an emoji character? See what happens when you type an emoji, uh, if you type an emoji character into a comment box on a WordPress 4.1 site uh, before this security fix and submit it. Take this slightly contrived, uh, but not particularly unusual comment. It's a link to a site, it has a title, it has some slightly unsavory, unsavory styling, but apart from that, it all looks fine. Um, the entire comment goes through several levels of sanity checks before making its way to WP cases. Cases is a function that uh, um, is a function for checking that the HTML is valid and removing any invalid tags or attributes. Uh, in this case, style attributes aren't allowed on uh, on link tags, so cases will remove that, and we end up with a validated comment. This comment goes through several more levels of sanity checking before it finally arrives at WPDB. Now, WPDB is the interface between all of WordPress and MySQL. The job is, its job is to insert, modify, and retrieve data from the database. It also makes two assumptions about data with regards to sanity checking. Uh, number one, it assumes that, all, that any section of WordPress sending it data has appropriately sanity checked that data uh, within the scope of that section. So the comment code ensures that it's a valid comment. That assumption is 100% correct. It also assumes that the data it sends to MySQL will be written exactly uh, will be written to the table exactly as it's sent. This turns out to be not correct. Now, remember what I said earlier about MySQL not being able to store emoji in the UTF-8 character set? Here's the way the problem comes in. What MySQL does is it truncates the string immediately before the character it doesn't recognize. So that gives us this, which is very clearly wrong. It's totally invalid HTML. Casus would have removed it earlier, but when Casus was looking at the string, it was valid HTML. And so we've written unverified HTML to the, da to the database, and it can be used as a, script, as a vector for a cross-site scripting vulnerability. This vulnerability didn't just apply to comments, of course. It applied to anything that could write to the database. Uh, comments, posts, um, options, just to name the vectors in core. Uh, any plugins that wrote to the database were vulnerable. Uh, your feedback form, your e-commerce site, um, your booking form, and anything could be used to carry out this attack. And so that was the problem. And we needed to figure out how to fix it. 
We knew from the beginning that we had two options. The first was called strict mode. Uh, MySQL has a handful of settings which change how it behaves as an, as an SQL database called modes. And one of those modes is called strict mode. Uh, strict mode fixes this problem by rejecting invalid strings. Instead of truncating the comment, it would just refuse to insert it and return an error. The, this behavior by itself is perfect. Unfortunately, that's not all that strict mode does. It also adds a bunch of extra restrictions to, um, which changes how some queries work with MySQL. And this would have ended up breaking the vast majority of WordPress sites. Our second option is what we call pre-flight checks. This takes the string being inserted and determines if MySQL will be able to insert it correctly. This is the trickier option, but in order to not break many, many sites, it's really the only one we had. Uh, there are a few requirements for we have for how this patch had to work. It needed to be 100% accurate. We couldn't afford to leave additional holes open, as announcing this bug would, in, would inevitably cause extra security um, to this area of code. It needed to be fast. Ideally, it shouldn't add any extra queries, or if it did, they should be as few as possible. And it needed to be invisible. It should, do, it should just do its job and silently protect the database. The average WordPress site should never see the difference. With that in mind, I present to you the, our first pass at fixing this bug. This little block of code would have been added to WPDB's prepare method. You don't need to worry about reading it. It's notable for two reasons. One, that it's the only version of the, fat, of the patch that fits on one slide. Um, it's, it's about 1% of the size of the, final, uh, of the final patch we committed. And two, it's completely wrong. Uh, it's fast, it's invisible, and it doesn't work. <laughs> The, uh, the regular expression we used is totally wrong for UTF-8. It matches valid, valid characters in the big five character set. And there are probably other bugs in it that we, uh, that we didn't find before it was abandoned. And so from those inauspicious beginnings, we began experimenting. Our next experiment went through several iterations and several different names. But the idea of strip invalid text remains, uh, remained the same. Given a string and a character set, it would try and remove invalid characters locally, if it could, or by asking MySQL to, uh, to handle the string, if it couldn't. Now, this experiment unfortunately introduced two of the bugs that ended up making it, or one of the two bugs that ended up making it into the final patch. It used PHP's MB converting coding uh, function to try and remove invalid characters. So MB, uh, PHP's multi-byte functions are, are great under very specific circumstances. Specifically, you need to be 100% certain of the character set of the string you're converting. You can't rely on the character set of, that uh, PHP is configured to, for example, because it might not match the input string. If you don't know the character set of the, string, of the input string, it means you have to guess. And so while we got pretty good at guessing, it just isn't 100% accurate, which can introduce bugs. We iterated on this concept for a while. We even ran into, the, into some bugs with the UTF-8 character set in PHP. So we moved to using this regular expression that you can see here, and which did make it into the final patch. The good news is that this regular expression does work because it's based on the UTF-8 spec. Uh, in hindsight, it uh, should have been a hint that there were probably bugs with other, with other character sets as well. The next problem we ran into is that you can do write queries directly to, um, directly to the database using WPDB's query method instead of using the helper insert or update functions. Uh, so we had two options here. We could write an SQL parser in PHP uh, to extract the data fields and figure out if we could insert them or not, or just detect if it's probably a write query and run our tests over the entire query string. Obviously, we went with the latter. Uh, the use write query function was comfortably running in HyperDB for years, so we borrowed that and used it as a test for whether an entire query string needs checking. I mentioned earlier that, earlier that there were two bugs that ended up making it into the final patch. It was around this time that we introduced the second bug. We'd been starting to test this patch on WordPress.org which was great for finding edge cases. Uh, there's a lot of legacy code running on WordPress.org. Uh, during that testing, we discovered an interesting case that we hadn't considered. How do we do pre-flight checks on tables that have different character sets on different columns? 
So we went back and added some more architecture. The pre-flight checks were already happily running at this stage. They'd connect to MySQL, determine if the data could be inserted, and then they, uh, they returned. So for this to work, we had to switch to doing pre-flight checks for every different character set in the set of columns referenced in the query. The issue here is that we overthought the problem. Uh, it, it seems fairly logical. Different character sets need to be checked differently. Uh, but it was an incorrect conclusion. You can't actually change the connection character set mid-query. So this extra flexibility uh, we added was, at best, useless. Uh, the worst case is it could have been a new vector for attacks. The good news is that we ended up removing it, but not before it managed to be the source of quite a few headaches. Uh, we also tried enabling strict mode in MySQL's, in uh, WordPress's nightly builds. Uh, suffice to say, the reaction was swift and overwhelming. Uh, there were many different plugins and use cases that were broken by strict mode, uh, so we quickly rolled it back. Strict mode is certainly something that I'd like to revisit in the future, though. Uh, I do have some theories about how it could work, and with recent versions of MySQL moving away from non-strict behavior, we'll, we'll need to adapt in much the same way that we needed to adapt to some of the changes in PHP 7. So if you happen to have thoughts or opinions on strict mode, I'd certainly be happy to chat about them. Uh, come and find me today or tomorrow here or on Sunday at the hack day. Um, as part of this bug fix, we added functions to automatically remove invalid text what, uh, when we were comfortable doing so. Uh, for example, we'd prefer to remove invalid characters from a post title rather than blocking a post from saving and risk losing that post. One of those cases we tried handling were serialized objects or arrays. It's not possible to remove invalid characters from the serialized string, so, as that causes it to no longer be a valid uh, serialized string. Instead, we needed to unserialize it, recurse through all of the data to check, to check each member individually, then serialize it again. This was inspired by the WP JSON encode function, which does a similar thing before JSON encoding uh, data. Luckily, we came to the conclusion that this was way more complex than we actually needed, and it was cut from the final patch. So far, we'd only focused on write queries, as that's where the danger lay. We didn't want invalid data being inserted in the database. We did begin to wonder if this bug could be modified to exploit read queries as well. As it turns out, it was possible. It didn't directly affect WordPress core that we could discover, but it could very easily affect plugins or themes in weird and subtle ways. For example, let's take a fictional user table and we'll insert an admin user. Sometime later, an attacker registers a new user with a slightly different name. As you can see, it has an emoji character at the end of it. It's obviously different to the admin user we inserted, but what does this query actually return? So that's a problem. Returning incorrect results can lead to information exposure or even privilege escalation attacks. So we needed to close off this hole as well. The good news is that thanks to the way the entire fix had been architected, it was only an extra few, lo few lines of code to check or read queries whenever they needed to be checked. Naturally, we reported this bug to Oracle, MariaDB, and several other MySQL fork maintainers who've taken action to fix it. And so this brings us to April 21st of this year. WordPress 4.1.2 uh, was released with this bug fix. The release itself went fine. Uh, millions of updates rolled, rolled out thanks to the auto update system. Unfortunately, there were some bugs that made it into the, into the final uh, release. A day or two after release, someone noted that individual characters weren't the only thing that would cause uh, MySQL to, trunc to truncate a string. It would also truncate a string that was too long for the field it was being stored in. In the case of comments, it's a 64 kilobyte field. So everything after the 65,536th character uh, was removed. It's, it's pretty easy to generate a string of that length and submit it as a comment to any WordPress site. So we quickly released a new version to deal with this bug. The good news here was that uh, the way we architected the original fix again made it pretty easy to add in this extra check. We we're already getting column info to, from the database for the character set, so we just needed to test against the column length as well. We also had some problems with some of the less common character sets. 
CP1251, which is used in several Eastern European countries, and EUC JPMS, which is used in Japan. Uh, most of these are legacy character sets, but they still have uh, substantial enough user, user bases that this fix caused significant problems. The primary issue here, as I mentioned earlier, was that we assumed that PHP's multibyte character, multibyte libraries had the same behavior as, My, as MySQL's character sets, which totally wasn't the case. Uh, we removed those checks. Now everything goes either through the UTF-8 regular expression we saw earlier, or it goes directly to MySQL for checking. So looking back, I think there are a couple of important things we learned from this process, uh, allowing us to improve the development process within WordPress core, and lessons, lessons that you can incorporate into your own development practices. First of all, if you've assumed something is true, test it. Uh, the hardest part is figuring out what your assumptions are, but when you create something new, take the time to step back and see what it relies on. Does it rely on those things correctly? Does it take different conditions into account? You can make it easier to figure out your assumptions by simplifying your code. Don't be afraid to throw everything out and start again. In the initial ticket alone for this bug, there are over 50 patches, including five complete rewrites. Uh, on, the, on the subsequent follow-up tickets, there are another 50 or so patches, several of which made significant changes to the code or completely removed the parts that didn't work. No matter how, how clever a piece of code is, if it doesn't solve the problem correctly, it should be removed. Don't try to build the ultimate solution. I've worked on a, on a bunch of different projects across WordPress core, on Jetpack, on WordPress.com, and it occurred to me recently that large chunks of the code I've written, of, uh, large chunks of the code I've written over the years have either been removed or replaced. Not because it was bad or wrong. Well, some of it was bad, but now's not the time to go into that. Um, not because it was bad or wrong, but because it's the nature of software development that the code you write will be replaced over time. Instead of focusing on making, it, on making the ultimate solution, make something simple so that the person who comes after you can easily incorporate it into a bigger vision. Uh, as they say, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. So when it comes time for someone to stand on your shoulders, make it e as easy as possible for them to reach higher. So before I finish, I'd like to give props to my co-conspirators on this voyage. Andrew Nason, WordPress lead developer. Uh, Nikolai Bacheski, WordPress securities, uh, security czar. And Mike Adams, magical coding wizard. And of course, the entire WordPress security team for acting as sounding board, tester, ideas source, and sometimes personal counselor. And that is the story of how we fixed the Trojan emoji bug. Thank you. I'd also like to offer a warning. This fairly innocuous conversation was how I was introduced to this bug. So if Nathan ever tells you that he has something in interesting for you, you may be getting more than you bargained for. <laughs> Thank you. morning. Hi. It's on. All right. It sounds like a lot of the complexity from this came from supporting many different configurations, lots of different legacy stuff. Um, are there plans to force migrations to a consistent table or, call or character set formats? Uh, no. Um, it's it's um, one of WordPress's strengths, I think, is its flexibility and its ability to be used for on many different configurations and for many different use cases. Uh, so I think it's, it's important that we continue so, to support as many different character sets as possible. And if people, if people want to use it on crazy configurations, then we let them do that. Hey, Gary. Hi. Um, I think there were concerns when this was being fixed that uh, other open source uh, packages might be affected by the, the same bug. So since it's been released, has that come to light? Any other uh, things been affected? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I think um, a, lot of, a lot of other open source uh, uh, CMSs, uh, to, to give an obvious example, Drupal is, um, is, quite, is quite well used. And 
Drupal uh, takes a different tack to what we to what we do is that they um, basically rewrite on a regular basis and break backwards compatibility, um, which isn't an option for um, uh, for WordPress. As we want to maintain backwards compatibility as much as possible, which does mean that we do have to write some um, some of these things to get a, uh, to keep things working, but it's. The way we view it is it's, um, it's important that we, it takes a few of us to write, a few of us a year to write this patch is better than breaking half of all WordPress sites and take, meaning that hundreds of thousands or millions of developers have to spend uh, days or weeks fixing their code. I was just curious, uh, what what was the reasoning for including emoji into WordPress? I mean, obviously there's a, the, the fixing the bugs and the database abstraction, but why actually include the emoji script on every site? Uh, I know there's a lot of contention from a lot of people out there about that. So would, um, your site already supports emoji. So what we, were, what we really did with the, with the emoji script is uh, fill in compatibility. Uh, like what we do, for example, with um, with adding in hacks to uh, to um, uh, to fix Internet Explorer bugs, the same thing we do to make sure that your browser displays emoji correctly. Emoji by itself is is a language, so it's important that we allow people to communicate in whatever language they choose. Hi, Gary. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the WordPress security team. Mm -hmm. And what is, uh, uh, can you introduce people to uh, responsible disclosure if they happen to find a security bug and how to reach your security team to properly handle the situation without making a mess? Of course. Uh, so security team is made up of about uh, 30 different people from various parts of the WordPress community. Um, if you do find something that you think might be a security bug, then email security at wordpress.org. Please don't submit it on the public uh, bug tracker. Um, security tickets do need to be handled privately. And even if it's not a bug, then we'll get back to you and let you know. Uh, if it is a bug, then it's much better that it's, that it's handled privately. Hi. Um, I was just wondering how serious of a bug this actually is. If by, for whatever reason, you choose not to upgrade, um, um, or can't upgrade for whatever reason? Very serious. Uh, it affected 90 something percent of sites. Uh, any site that had the, where comments were turned on, for example, and it, excuse me, it, um, it allowed an attacker to completely take control of your site. So it is very important that you upgrade. Smiley face, thumbs up, smiling pile of poop. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I found working with various character sets when doing code development sometimes a bit of a trial. Do you have any tips that you learned when working through this on how to work with various character sets efficiently? Um. I think, so for modern development and if backwards compatibility isn't a concern, then you use UTF-8 or in MySQL UTF-8 MB4. Uh, that's uh, based on Unicode and it's the idea of Unicode is that it covers, it's a replacement for all character sets. Um, if you do need to handle, um, handle legacy systems, it's... I don't think I've found a particularly good way. It's mostly just a case of uh, knowing the differences between them uh, and kind of working from there. I was just curious, I don't know if this is even really possible, but when it comes to major security issues like this and stuff like that, once they get reported, is there any way for you guys as a security team to kind of track when sites fall victim to these kind of security issues and so I mean so you can kind of keep track of 
you know, how, how serious this was before it got patched and things like that? Or, I mean, again, don't know if it's possible, but it'd just be interesting to see that kind of data. Uh, we don't have data on across all sites, but we do work with the various uh, security companies, uh, Security and VaultPress, for example, to kind of get an idea for uh, what the level of attack is, or um, if we if we see it, see something that's being attacked through comments, then we work with the Akismet team to to get an idea of how it's being exploited. Hi, I was wondering if you could speak to the communications that came about after you fix the bug. How do you roll it out to the world and get everybody to upgrade your site, their sites? Um, we auto upgrade. Um, it's, this, this was always the idea of the auto upgrade system, was that when WordPress is now over a quarter of the internet and when there's a security bug and when it's announced, uh, people work very, uh, attackers work very quickly to try and exploit it. So if we're able to roll out a fix for it to every WordPress site, to tens of millions of sites in half an hour, then it keeps it secure. Um, so the, the auto updates is the main thing, and then obviously the actual information about what, uh, what the exploit was is spread through the WordPress news, news blog, and um, that gets shared around. Well, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>